Freddy Kasha, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Staten Island Comedy Show. We're going to have a great show for you tonight, so stay tuned. It's a virtual show. We have comedians to perform their stand-up sets on location, and you will see them right here on the Staten Island Comedy Show. Our first comedian is Jenny Moore. She is from Dallas, Texas. She has been doing comedy for five years. What made her get into comedy was the first time she stepped on stage, Jenny felt like she was at home. Jenny says there's nothing awesome as the feeling that you get from making the entire room laugh. You can find her on Facebook and Instagram at Jenny Moore Comedy. On YouTube, subscribe to the Jenny Moore Comedy Channel. Our next comedian of the show, Jenny Moore, ladies and gentlemen. So a little bit about me. I get mistaken for a man at least once a month. Wasn't really a joke, but I appreciate the laughter. <laughs> Gonna internalize that later. It is true, though. It, it is actually true. I do get mistaken for a man at least once a month. And I always love to tell that, tell that fact to people at a show because it always has about a 50-50 effect. Half of y'all look at me and you're like, well, I don't see how that hot and milfy thing could possibly be mistaken for a man. <laughs> then the other half of y'all already assumed I was a drag queen, so... <laughs> I apologize for any genitals I may have confused in this process. But to be fair, y'all were the ones looking. <laughs> It is something that used to bother me a lot. I mean, I got bullied a lot because of it. It was just something I was really sensitive about. But then I grew up and I realized, you know, I am a grown woman with a ton of unearned male privilege. You can't buy that. Mm -mm. I was not born with a penis. But I did discover if you clomp around long enough in work boots and flannel, a.k.a. the mid-90s for me, people are going to make certain assumptions about you. I don't get hassled at the hardware store. Nope. Don't get those questions like, ma'am, are you sure you know what you're doing? Or, ma'am, are you sure you're licensed to operate a forklift? No, they just let me roam free. <laughs> Shoot, some people even think I'm so, I look so knowledgeable that they ask for my advice. Now, y'all, if you see me at the hardware store, do not ask for my advice. Because one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm going to have to admit my ignorance or make something up. Either way, somebody's walking away hurt from that experience. <laughs> Never been handy. I uh, never learned a lot about home repairs. My dad, bless his heart, he was never good with home repairs. He could fix things, but just kind of, you know, like flip the light switch and the doorbell rings kind of fix. <laughs> Want to know how you can tell if your dad was kind of shady in the home repair department? Go and flush a toilet. <laughs> How confident were you in that flush? <laughs> if you can push the handle down and just walk away confident in the knowledge that the world's a good place, congratulations, your dad could fix shit. I have to watch every flush to completion every time. So when I say, don't ask me about repairs, I mean it. Do not let this macho exterior fool you. And this mustache is mostly for show. <laughs> Our next comedian is Richard Parisi. Richie grew up in North Massapequa, but currently lives in Patchogue. 
He has been doing comedy now for a year and a half. His stage name is Richie the Head Parisi. <laughs> he decided to go into comedy because he has always wanted to try stand-up comedy. So one day, he finally decided just to go for it. If you would like to find more of Richie, you can find him on Facebook at Richard Parisi or on Twitter, which he doesn't use much, <laughs> at Head Parisi. That's H-E-A-D-P-A-R-I-S-I. Ladies and gentlemen, Richie Parisi! All right, let me tell you. Why the head? Well, let me tell you. The size is the size. I tell you, this head's going to be on someone six foot two, not five foot two. You know, I had a big head my whole life. I was born with a big head. I wasn't good at my doctors. I was good at my fire department. With the jaws of life. Look at the size of this neck. Seven, 19 and inch neck. 19 inches. I could like all my shirts at the big tall man shop. I walk in and I go, sir, I think you're in the wrong store. I say, 19 and a half inch neck. He goes, walk this way. And I notice I have these bumps on my skin. It's a genetic condition. It makes you look like I'm the love child of Dana Vito and a pickle. <laughs> have all over my body. All over, except for one place. I would love to have them there. I'd actually be ripped for her pleasure. <laughs> and I, I want to play, I play the lottery all the time. And people say, Rich, what are you going to buy the first thing that you get to win the lottery? I said, the first thing I'm going to buy is a vasectomy. Because when this head is dumb, that head's going to be smart. <laughs> And I am Italian, 100% Italian. So I asked my parents, what kind of Italian am I? Am I not with thine? Am I Sicilian? My parents said, well, you're 90% to yeah. <laughs> And 10% Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my parents had me, my mom had me when I was 42, but she was 42 years old. It changed her life, baby. So I want to thank my mom for doing that, for having me such an older age. I want to thank my dad to still be into my mom. <laughs> and I want to thank the druggists at the pharmacy who closed early so my dad couldn't buy a condom. <laughs> I also, I have no kids. You know, I have no kids, and people say, don't have kids, Rich. But friends, family, Dr. Clergy said, do not breed. And I might hate being short. I'm very short. I was short my whole life. People say, don't worry, Rich, you'll shoot up, you'll shoot up. Still waiting to shoot up. And I don't need heroin. My dad was 5'11", my mother 4'11". Guess whose height I took? No, the pet doggy. When I go to music parks, I can't go on any of the cool rides. I'm stuck on a teacup ride that Mary Gorman. <laughs> I actually tried getting on the roller coaster. The little sick face tweet goes, Dad, you're not tall enough for this ride. I go, listen, I may not be tall enough for this ride, but I'm tall enough to kick your butt. <laughs> now I can't go to Great Adventure. <laughs> and also, you know, I go to um, a lot of restaurants. I love ch restaurants. I just tried this new fusion restaurant, Asian Italian fusion. It's called Fungools. <laughs> <laughs> Their senior dish is some wop slop. <laughs> and they, they actually used to open up a Christian-based burger place in my neighborhood. It's called Holy Cow. <laughs> Their slogan is, have it Yahweh. <laughs> so I so I went there, I ordered the Lamb of God burger. The um, St. Teresa Tater Tots. <laughs> the Absolution Vodka. <laughs> and for dessert, I had the hot apple pies. <laughs> but then they have a kids meal, it's a holy trinity meal. It comes with popcorn shrimp, <laughs> communion cookies, <laughs> and a plastic Jesus pencil sharpener. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And you have a family lunch meal. We have the Last Supper family meal. It feeds 13. And who likes rap music? Anyone big rap fans here? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't really like rap music, but if I was going to be a rap artist, my name would be Two Papa Z. <laughs> And you know, this, with sports, this pandemic really, really sucks. You know, I was looking forward to the Summer Olympics. Any of the Summer Olympics fans? Yeah. Okay, I'm the only one. But the only one, only one event I watch in the Summer Olympics, I watch women's weightlifting. And I'll tell you why. If you're familiar with Olympic weightlifting, there are two categories. The clean and jerk, and the snatch. <laughs> Listen to these sports commentators talking about their snatch is like listening to porn. They say, she has the best snatch in the competition. <laughs> I've seen her snatch. It's great. <laughs> and one female comedian, and one female commentator actually said, I love her snatch. <laughs> I was done like that. <laughs> but then I was, I'm divorced. Ladies, I'm divorced. I love being divorced. I can do things I couldn't do when I was married. You can drink out of that milk carton. Leave the toilet seat up. But the best thing I couldn't do, there's a bunch of movies I wanted to watch I couldn't watch I was married. Now I get to watch them. The movie Forrest Hump. <laughs> when Harry ate Sally. Shane and Ryan's Privates. Armageddon it on. The Vinci Love. Armageddon it on. And my favorite, my favorite is Slimmy with the Animal. That was great, Rich. Very funny. Now I'm going to introduce to you a segment we call Psychic Card Reading with jo comedians Jody Oliver, Esther Forrester, and The Floating Head. Ask your question. So, seeing the sky and I'm not sure where it's going. Queen of Swords. Yeah, tough. Justice. Magician. Head? Watch out for the magician card. If he moves in, he could come out of nowhere. <laughs> You're very strong. You're a very dominant woman. And, uh, you would like this to work out. Something is a little funky with him. Isn't everybody a little funky? Yeah. Um, what's so funky about him? The hermit. Mm. King of Cups. The world. Okay, this guy could be bipolar. Head? So, what if he's a little funky and bipolar? You drew the King of Cups card, which means he is your cup of tea. <laughs> but isn't everybody a little bipolar these days? Not everybody, no. Bipolar's serious. As serious as this virus? Um, the virus is pretty serious. <laughs> okay, next question. So, comedy clubs are reopening. And what's it going to be like? Mmm. Uh-uh. Okay, um, too many people are going to rush to get into the clubs. Way too many people, and that's not going to be good. Um, if they could keep the clubs safe and clean, but from what I'm seeing here, it doesn't look good. Ace of Swords, um, club owners are going to have their hands full. And the people that run the shows. 
hopefully there'll be a happy medium. Hey! You drew the Ace of Sword card. I'm going to tell you what I told my friend who has a sword business. You have some good points. <laughs> Will there be a lot of backstabbing with the swords? Should I be shying away? Knight of Swords. Yes, everybody wants to get in. Ace of Cups. The strong will survive. Wheel of Fortune. Only a very few will really get to do the shows. So, I'll have to sleep with someone to get to the top and do the shows? What was that? I'll have to sleep with someone to get to the top. No, you never sleep with someone to get to the top. Really? I disagree, Jody. To get to the top, it's not what you know, it's who you blow. Like this. So, I'm thinking about expanding my business. Is that something I should do now? Oh, you're so terrific at what you do. Definitely. Page of Wands. Page of Cups. Nine of Wands. You would do very well, you'd make money. And then I can buy my way into all the comedy clubs. <laughs> or I'll just open my own one. Um. Comic books. Queen of Swords. You get that Queen of Swords every time we talk about the comedy clubs. Someone's out to get And the Hermit and the Fool. Every time. Yes, yes. The Queen of Swords card, you get a lot. Did you know that in here, the Queen of Swords is only one foot tall? Because she's a ruler. <laughs> See, today you're talking soft. You're doing that. The voice isn't all the way up here. Okay, it's nice and mellow. You're doing a much better job. And, um, that's what you, you have to learn that control and discipline when you're on a stage. Yes, Esther, just like an artist. They're in good at self-control because they always know where to draw the line. <laughs> um, also, you jokes. I heard you at the Staten Island Comedy Club, which is really not enough for me to make a judgment, but it's got to be set up, punch, set up, punch, set up, punch. You gotta have more punchlines with that. Would someone work with me? Because if so, you're doing yes. a great advertisement. Yes, I would definitely work with you. Um, you work a girl, you work a girl. How to stand, how to dress, what you should wear. With you, all this money, I could hire a stylist. Well, I'll take care of that too. Really? Yes, I have a associate's degree from Fashion Institute of Technology. What so, do you think, Head? I think you tear out the last page of your life. You will have to draw your own conclusion. <laughs> Could this be a call from this family? Yes, it's a call, and I'll get it. See you at the next reading. Bye! <laughs> Thanks, Jody, Esther, and Head. Our next comedian is Ellen Orchid. She is from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, New York. She has been doing comedy since 1981, with breaks to get married and to raise two kids. Ellen was in med medical school at the time st she started stand-up comedy. 
What made her get into comedy was she was looking for a hobby that would take her off campus and be fun lifting on, in contrast to ongoing seriousness of medical school. You can get her information on Facebook and follow her on Twitter. Our next comedian of the show, Ellen Orchid, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everybody. What a good looking crowd. Wow. My name is Ellen. This is such a joy for me. You know, I used to work as a psychiatrist. How does that make you feel? <laughs> to admit it? <laughs> Anyone hearing so many voices, you don't know what I just said. <laughs> Doing therapy in Manhattan is like selling band-aids at the Battle of Gettysburg. <laughs> really, I wanted to help the mentally ill. These people were nuts. <laughs> Every day you'd go in and face incredible fear, sadness, rage, that was the staff. <laughs> stressful, stressful work. They always made me work on the holidays. On Christmas Eve, I was stuck in the psychiatric emergency room. And I remember this past year on that one night, I saw 12 hypochondriacs, 11 obsessive compulsives, 10 pyromaniacs, <laughs>
better, richer, and health. I'm sure that's what I circled. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm a parent, we have two kids to raise, and I am grateful. Do we have any parents in the audience today? Yeah. Good for you. And the rest of you, tell me, what do you do for aggravation? <laughs> it is not an easy job, but uh, my kids are grown now. And, uh, you know, I loved being a mom. And uh, I missed the homework that we used to do. <laughs> we did the science fair project, What Wine Helps Mom Pass Out Faster. <laughs> and my kids were in a school where they had to take Latin. Ridiculous. You know what I think of Latin? Gigantus wastus of time. <laughs> Come on. What, are they going to get a job working in the Holy Roman Empire? <laughs> We were living in South Brooklyn, or uh, Sobro. <laughs> I went up to the school, I complained. I said, we're in South Brooklyn. Give us something we can use. Russian. <laughs> the principal said, yet. <laughs> yeah, South Brooklyn. Interesting place, very big Russian community. They even have a Russian Mafia. Oh. How does this work? Do they make you an offer you can't pronounce? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a crazy world. Crazy world. I try dating now. It's not easy. It's not easy. It gets very lonely. I go to the dentist just to hear a man say, open wide. <laughs> yeah. I try all the online dating. I'm on J Don't, E Agony, OK Stupid. It's not going well. It really isn't. Anyway, you have been a lovely audience, and I feel so much better. That's the end of the show. I want to thank everyone for watching and all of the talent for coming on. And if you are a comedian and you want to come on the show, message me on Facebook. Nevin Cummings. Goodbye. See you on the next show.